Newton's second law, if you put a force on a stationary mass, then the mass will accelerate in the direction of that force. If the net force is zero, then that mass does not move. Force components are positive when they point in the positive direction. Otherwise, those components are given negative values. An object is in equilibrium if the sum of the forces are zero and the sum of the torques are zero. This object is nailed in place so that it cannot move, but it can spin. If you put a force along this lever arm, then the mass will spin counterclockwise, and we'll take that to be the direction of positive torques. The tail of the lever arm vector r is placed at the point about which the object is rotating. The tip of the lever arm vector is placed at the point of application of the force. This force will make the object spin clockwise and we'll choose that to be the negative torque direction. Here are the two vectors r and f when they are placed tail to tail. Theta is the smallest angle between these two vectors when they are placed tail to tail. The magnitude of the torque is tau equals the magnitude of the lever arm r times the magnitude of the force f times the sine of the angle between those two vectors when they are placed tail to tail. An object is in equilibrium when the sum of the forces is zero and the sum of the torques is zero. The seesaw itself is a board of mass capital M and is balanced at its center point. One person of mass M1 sets off center a little, the unbalanced board tilts to the ground. A second person of mass M2 sets near the edge of the board in order to balance the seesaw. The vertical forces that act on the beam are the downward weights of big W equals big M times G and the weight of mass 1 equals m1g, and the weight of mass 2 equals m2g, and the upward normal force at the pivot. The sum of the y components of forces that act on the beam are plus n minus w minus w1 minus w2 equals 0. To be in equilibrium, the sum of the torques must also be zero. You can take torques about any point, but we choose the point that results in the greatest number of zero length lever arms. Here, take torques about the pivot point so that the two forces N and big W have lever arms of length zero. Let's look at force vector W1 first. Here is the lever arm vector R1 for this force. We are taking torques about the pivot point, so the tail of the vector R1 is located at that pivot point. The tip of vector R1 is located at the point of application of the force W1. The angle between these two vectors when they are placed tail to tail is 90 degrees. This torque tries to make the seesaw spin clockwise. Here is the force vector W2 and its lever arm. This torque tries to make the seesaw spin counterclockwise. Choosing clockwise spins to be negative, we have the sum of the torques acting on the beam equals the counterclockwise spin W2 R2 sine 90 minus the clockwise spin W1 R1 sine 90 plus the normal force N times its lever arm of length zero, plus the beam's weight W times its lever arm length of zero, all equals zero. We now have two equations, the sum of the Y components of forces and the sum of the torque equation. In this case, we could have two unknowns. For W equals 1100 newtons, W1 equals 950 newtons, 
W2 equals 150 newtons, R1 equals 0.25 meters. Please show that the normal force N equals 2200 newtons and that the lever arm R2 equals 1.6 meters. The heavier person sitting near the pivot is balanced by a lighter person setting farther from the pivot. Torque tau equals RF sine theta. This is the principle of the lever, which can be a force multiplier. As Archimedes said, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. Notice that you push on the end of a wrench at right angles to the lever arm to give the greatest torque. A stopped car tilts when it begins to move because the rear wheels push backward against the ground and in reaction, the ground pushes forward on the car. This forward push causes the car to rotate about its center of mass. A braking car tilts forward because the wheels push forward against the ground and in reaction, the ground pushes backward on the car. The torque from this backward push causes the car to rotate about its center of mass. When a movie car drives over a cliff, the front wheels are first to lose the upward support and begin to fall, resulting in a rotation of the car. A sign of mass little m hangs from the end of a post of length l and mass big M that is hinged to a wall. The right end of the post is tied by a string to the wall. The vertical portion of the tension helps support the weight of the sign and the beam. The horizontal portion pulls the post against the wall and in reaction the wall pushes back with the horizontal portion of its force. The left edge of the post would be sliding downward but the vertical component of the hinge force resists this. We'll label the force of the wall on the post in terms of its horizontal H and vertical V components. To be in equilibrium, the net force on the post must be zero and the net torque on the post must be zero. Torques can be calculated about any point but choose to locate that point such that the greatest number of lever arms will have a zero length. In this case, we choose to take torques about the hinge so that the lever arms for forces little h and little v will be zero. The sum of the x components of forces equals plus h minus t cosine alpha equals zero. The wire makes this angle alpha relative to the post. The sum of the y components of forces equals plus v minus big mg minus the weight of the sine, little mg, plus the vertical component of the tension, T sine alpha, and all these forces add up to zero. And taking positive torques to produce counterclockwise motion about the hinge, the sum of the torques equals H times a lever arm of zero length, plus V times a lever arm of zero length, minus big mg, times the lever arm of length L over 2, times the sine of 90 degrees, which is the angle between the lever arm vector R and the force vector big MG when they are placed tell to tell, minus little MG times the lever arm of length L times the sine of 90 degrees. The weight of the hanging sine, little MG, causes tension in this string such that T equals little mg. It's actually the tension T that's putting a force and a torque on the beam. This last torque is trying to make the beam spin counterclockwise so it gets a plus sign. We have T times L times the sine of alpha. The lever arm goes from the hinge to the point of application of the tension force. The tension points in this direction. This portion of the tension is perpendicular to the lever arm. We identify this portion of the tension to be T sine alpha. Equivalently, we use the angle between the lever arm R and the force T when they are placed tail to tail. 
This angle is 180 minus alpha, and we know that the sine of 180 minus alpha is the same thing as the sine of alpha, so both techniques were equivalent. The sum of these torques is zero. Now we have three equations, so we can have three unknowns. For L equal three meters, little m equal 40 kilograms, big M times G equals 1,000 newtons, and alpha equal 35, Please show from equation 3 that the tension is 1560 newtons and that the horizontal component of the hinge force is 1270 newtons and the vertical component of the hinge force is 500 newtons. A ladder of length L and mass big M leans against a wall. There is friction at the floor but not at the wall. A person of weight little mg is located one third of the way along the ladder. N1 is the normal force of the frictionless wall on the ladder top. N2 is the normal force of the floor on the ladder foot. Little f is the frictional force keeping the ladder from slipping rightward. The contact force between the foot of the ladder and the floor has both horizontal and vertical components, and these are labeled frictional force F and normal force N2. The ladder is about to slide away from the wall, so the static frictional force F points toward the wall. To be in equilibrium, the net force must be zero and the net torque must be zero. Torques can be calculated about any point. Locate that point so that the greatest number of lever arms will have zero length. In this case, we choose to take torques about the foot of the ladder so that the lever arms for N2 and little f will be zero. The sum of the x components of forces is minus the frictional force plus the normal force N1 equals zero. The sum of the y components of forces equals plus N2 minus the weight of the ladder, big mg, minus the weight of the person, little mg, and these add up to zero. The frictional force is always mu times the normal force, which is N2 in this situation. The sum of the torques is the frictional force times the zero length lever arm, plus the normal force N2 times its lever arm, which has a length of zero. The torque due to the weight of the ladder, big mg, gets a plus sign because it's trying to make the ladder spin in a counterclockwise manner. Here is the lever arm. The tail of the lever arm is located at the chosen pivot point, which is located at the foot of the ladder this time, and ends at the point of application of the force. And here is the force vector. These are not perpendicular. This is the portion of the lever arm that is perpendicular to the force, and this portion is L over 2 cosine alpha. A torque is a lever arm R times a force F times the sine of the angle between those two vectors R and F when they are placed tail to tail. This can also be written as the perpendicular portion of the lever arm times the force. If you slide the force vector so that it is placed tail to tail with the lever arm vector, then the angle between these two is alpha plus 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 plus alpha is the same thing as cosine alpha, so the two approaches are equivalent. The next term in the torque sum is due to the person who is located a third of the way along the length of the ladder. This torque is trying to make the ladder spin counterclockwise, so it gets a plus sign. And in the same way as the previous torque, we get plus mg L over 3 cosine alpha. This last term is due to the torque of the normal force of the wall, N1, on the ladder. Here is the lever arm, and here is the portion of the lever arm that is perpendicular to the force. This portion is L sine alpha. The other choice is to use the angle between the two vectors when they are placed tail to tail, which in this case is 180 minus alpha, and the sine of 180 minus alpha is the same thing as the sine of alpha.
The torque from the normal force, N1, is trying to make the ladder spin clockwise. So we write minus N1L sine alpha. And the sum of all of these torques add up to zero since the ladder is in equilibrium. We have three equations, so we can have three unknowns. A wheel of radius R is pushed with sufficient horizontal force P to pivot it around the edge of a stair step of height H. At this moment, instead of having any of the wheel's weight on the ground, the normal force there is zero. There is a contact force at the edge of the stair step because force P is pressing the wheel against the step, causing a horizontal reaction force N sub H and the step is supporting a portion of the weight of the wheel with a vertical reaction force, N sub V. The weight of the wheel, Mg, can be considered to act at the geometric center of the wheel. We'll write the sum of the torques taken about the pivot point so that the lever arms, N sub V and N sub H, both have zero length. Here's the radius R. The step has height h, so this distance is r minus h. This side of a triangle has side a, where a squared equals r squared minus r minus h squared equals h times 2r minus h. The torque caused by push p has this lever arm r. The tail of the lever arm vector is placed at the point about which we're taking torques. The tip of the lever arm vector R is located at the point of application of push P. These two vectors are not tail to tail. The portion of the lever arm vector R that is perpendicular to push P is this side of length R minus H. Here is the weight Mg of the wheel. This is the lever arm and this is the portion of the lever arm that is perpendicular to the force. The sum of the torques is then the weight times the perpendicular component of its lever arm, A, minus the push times the perpendicular component of its lever arm, R minus H, equals zero. Or, the push needed to make the wheel go over the step is P equals A M G divided by R minus H. Notice that P goes to zero when h goes to zero, and p becomes infinite when r equals h, 